G'day guys, it's Calvin from the Cartoon Company down under in New Zealand. As many of you know, I do a heap of 1UZ conversions and wiring and related work. And today I'm doing a set of instructions for a man in Australia. So Tim, these are your instructions. But they also of course serve as a brief of the process and the job that I've done. Chances are, if I've done one job like this, there's other people who want the same job. So whilst this is directed for my customer as instructions, it's a great way of seeing the way a job's been done. In many cases, I also do a build video. Um, this one didn't quite go as planned. It was meant to be a virgin loom and it had been got at by the previous owner. I've got footage, but also I'm not sure I'm gonna have time to edit it all. One thing that came out of this job was the manifold flip video. And this is the job it's going on. It's off to Australia with a flipped manifold. So the wiring loom has had to be adjusted to suit. The, the first thing I do with a job like this and I follow it in, in every single one pretty much, is I want to identify the vehicle's engine loom and the pinouts of it. Generally, I've got one that's close, so I grab those, yep, but I confirm it on this loom. So this is the forerunner loom. I got the pinouts for that one and that one and I draw up my own set of notes for it. This one happened to be very, very close to a New Zealand V6 surf. No resistor for the fuel circuit, for the fuel pump. It was close enough. So I used that. I chose to keep it intact and not take the body plugs off in this case, just in case I had any issues. And I'm, I'm glad I did because there was one wire that I wasn't quite where I expected. So I'll raid these body plugs off now for my next job. And it can either go back to the customer or it can go in the bin. Quite interesting for me was the Forerunner had quite a unique loom, very limited range. And the LS400 ECU, very limited range. So it was kind of a good match. I then took the information from there and integrated the Lexus computer into the system. So this is the result. Instead of the Forerunner computer, we now have the UZ computer. We have those two body plugs. So that will plug into the surf, sorry, Forerunner loom, into the body. Got a couple of wires run out for air conditioning. These two, and I'll make some notes on those. Those are for air conditioning. And I've also put a spare green white wire which runs to the fuse box. Igniters have been swapped sides. Which you can see here, uh, we, this is the left hand side, this is the right hand side. Throttle body is normally to the right hand side. It's so now on the left hand side. So the igniters are now on the left hand side. The VSV for the purge system can go as now on the left hand side. Of course we're using a, an imaginary, uh, there's a, an inner guard here on the vehicle. That's the other igniter plug. There's also a diagnostic box. So that now has some of the uh, Forerunner pins in it, and it has the LS400 pins in it. Again, mounted on the left-hand side. I've got a big firewall grommet. Tim, uh, that's gonna be a pain to fit because it is tight. I haven't secured it, so it can be moved. 
And I haven't finished taping here or here, so you can adjust it to suit. Tim also supplied me with the diagnostic box, which is under the dash. Ooh, so I wired that up as well. Here's two of those spare wires. There's that spare green white wire. And then these ones, these two here, are for the fan circuit. Grab it. Here it is. Look at that. So here's the fan circuit. Goes out to the imaginary radiator. Out here. Did I mention this was a really early ECU? Like 91, 92 LS400? Very, very early one. Right, um, so we work our way up the loom. I've used a standard series of plug, not actually off the LS, it's off a later model LS with the three pins. Stepper motor is now on the back. And I've given this cover a bit of a trim so it can all fit out nicely and, the, and clear the, the stepper. Cold start injector. I've made a new short loom out to the factory plug and this can be secured appropriately. Here's a little gearbox loom. So that'll plug in. This particular vehicle has the manual engagement transfer case. It took me ages to find one. They're very rare over here. But I do happen to have one, which is put aside for one of my own vehicles. It's a pretty good transfer case to be working with. You'll notice TPS is not on this side because it's now on that side. It's not there, it's, it's over there. The TPS is now here. And the airflow meter there's plenty of distance, I think about, about 500 mils, so it should reach wherever it goes. The loom itself has had a refab, you inject the plugs and a little bit of braid, use temp sensor plug and Tim has already replaced that temp sensor. Now coming around the front, oh look, that is the standard front crank loom off this setup. Well, that's going in the rubbish. And I made a new one. Factory plugs up there. Now I fitted a four pin because I've added an air conditioning wire and an oil pressure wire into this loom. But apart from that, that will fit in the stock stand position and plug in like it should. May need a little trim on the sensor plug just because that plug's a bit different on some of them. Factory covers have been used. It's all looking pretty good there. I've also got that. And that. So a new starter loop. That's long enough to go from the engine here around past the brake booster over to the battery about where I'm standing. So that's starter loop. And a new knock sensor and start trigger loop. And that was to replace this piece. Yes. Standard broken knock sensor plugs. The trigger plug is the early one, so they normally last okay. And this plug, as soon as I touched it, started falling apart. But it was uncut. So that gets replaced with that. This is the standard Lexus alternator wiring. And it now comes from the factory fuse box. 
There's a new piece going out to the battery. Red shrink wrap, so you can't get that wrong. And here is the alternator loom. Factory silicon rubber boot. And control wire with some heat proof sleeving. And that's been integrated into the stock wiring loom. Here's some fan wiring. It's the stock fan wiring. And this has all been modified and had some extra wires run through it. These ones. One for the main relay. Two for fan, the green and the blue, and a green white as a spear, just in case. In the factory box, factory main relay, factory fuse in there, and here's our spears. We've also added a ignition. And an earth. Basically, with the fan circuit, Tim's added a temp sensor or a fan switch to the radiator circuit. He'll connect up the wires over there. When it gets hot, up to fan switching, we've got a decision to make whether we run a new relay to control the fans. Although I think a better option is going to be to just tap into the factory fan wiring. It's already there, and it's got the, it's got the two speeds. Though I'm going to have to check on that and just uh, confirm yet. Which Tim will do when he watches the video, which is the purpose for having the video. So he can check everything's right before I put it in a box and send it back to Oz. Leftover box of broken plugs spare wire and plugs and EGR temp and Tim's TPS somehow that came over to me so that's going back and a couple of clips there was another bag of clips so I can see it and for the front loom, there's another bag of clips. Many were broken, so cable ties might be a better option instead of using those. And a plastic cover. Factory, this loom had wiring that ran through the middle of the engine. So the diagnostic box and the idle speed was through the center. Now being flipped, it's backwards, it's around the wrong way. Everything's been moved. I don't need this anymore. Okay, I've got a loom on an engine. I've got a start in place. I'm going to remove the gearbox loom. You know what we're missing? I know what we're missing. Noise. We're missing noise. Made that one make noise this morning. Now to make this one make noise. Yeah. I'm going to return, I'm going to give it some fuel, I'm going to jump some wires, because it's some of the relays aren't here, like the fuel pump relay, which is in Australia, and I don't have cable long enough to go to Australia, I might just jump it over here. Power it up, like factory, and let's make some noise. The scan tool attached, and I'm using the one that's normally the diagnostic plug that's normally on the engine. My check light is flashing. And it's just a constant on off. There are no fault codes. Check. We're good. I've swapped from that connector to that connector. And it tells me that there's no fault codes. Both data link connectors are working fine. The one on the engine gives slightly different information. Well, it's the same information, but in a different form. They both work. Let's make noise. Right, let's see how she starts for the first time. That's not bad, actually.
very first start, a couple of coughs, a couple of splutters, and then away it went. Just resetting the stepper, so it will have gone in and out, fire it up again, see how it sounds. Starts and runs. I've confirmed my idle speed wiring is correct. Another little video on that. I fixed the air leak. I should have done those bolts up a bit tighter on the throttle body. I'm going to let it sit, cool down, and give it a couple more starts to check it's all good. And then it's ready to go in a box and go home. Something a bit different that I don't see so much early LS400 four wire oxygen sensor whereas a normal Celsius of the same year would have a single wire right oh I'm happy When an engine is first started, I don't stress too much if it has the odd burble. Old yellow's running on a stand. It's never been off that stand. Hmm. Been started with multiple ECUs. And for that particular setup, it's got the wrong injectors. It's got the bigger injectors. So it's running richer than it should. But it's settled down come up to temperature I've actually put water in it for its first time since I've had it and it sounds good the idle speed settled down and it's pretty much doing everything like it should so that loom can come off go in a box ready to go back home the loom is coming off going into a box this bit uh, Tim will tape up once he puts it into the vehicle, this bit I've left as well can be taped up appropriately. Let's get this loom off. Put it in the box.